All right, so this is a suggestion via Discord. The name of the video is a Springfield, Ohio resident. Uh, this is a dystopian nightmare. Guys, yeah, I've seen a lot of things now. Like people are going out there filming, asking questions. And uh, I mean, I get it. You can say all of the things about the pets and the ducks. Let's move on past that. And let's just speak about the actual cultural impact uh, specifically of the area. Uh, and the current residents or the previous residents of Springfield are not actually happy at all with the ongoings of specifically the area, all right? Trash being thrown on the streets unnecessarily, um, all these recent car accidents, somehow um, people are are, be, are able to get their driver's license without ever actually driving in the United States of America, but yet Americans have to actually go through the test. So listen, this is a crazy thing that's happening here, all right? Allegedly, all right? But either way, let's go ahead and jump into this and, and see where this takes us, guys. Ohio, a town of just 58,000, now at the center of the migrant crisis with at least 15,000 Haitians arriving since 2020. Now forcing the state to send state troopers in and set aside millions of dollars to deal with the crisis. Our next guest has lived in Springfield for more than 30 years and says it's no longer feels like her home. Diana Daniels joins us now. So Diana, according to the reports, the schools have been overrun, the clinics have been overrun, and now a lot of jobs have been taken as well. What is life like there now? It's like living in a dystopian nightmare. You, you hope you wake up and it's 2019 again, and then you realize it's 2024, and it's the same thing over and over again, day after day. Um, it's hard sometimes to get up in the morning and, and hear uh, residents that I've known for years um, struggle. This is a paycheck to paycheck kind of kind of town, mm -hmm. a working class, and the citizens that depend on our social services, um, like health care, a rocking horse, uh, going down to the Social Security office for benefits, uh, are waiting in line, and they're not getting the services they need. And um, it, it breaks my heart to... Bro, they're showing the park ducks on purpose, bro. They're doing that. They're doing that on purpose, bro. I mean, I get the humor, but let's continue. To see people that I taught and their children experiencing this. So I took it upon myself to make sure that I showed up at every yeah. city commission meeting pleading our case. And it, if it took, you know, something like this to get the spotlight flashed on us, um, mm -hmm. then so be it. We, we've needed help, but um, mm -hmm. for several years, and maybe we're going to finally get it. The sad thing is, is it's more of my money being spent on a problem that we did not create. So guys really quickly oh that's a lot um yeah i honestly think that this is probably like any town usa uh specifically ones that were a, that that took in a lot of individuals specifically during the crisis that was going on in haiti now we need to be we need to be very careful with the term migrant in this instance because i'm almost positive the overwhelming majority of them are refugees specifically coming from an area um war-torn right um and these are completely different things right? but either way um yeah i'm pretty sure this is extremely damaging to to every single person that lives there. Imagine, you're there, uh, you don't really have that many jobs in the first place, and all of a sudden you're being uh, bombarded with a influx of uh, what one person said was about 35,000. For some reason, this report is saying 15, right? But um, based off of some of the people there, they're saying, oh, it's probably closer to 35 than, than 20, right? Um, so, that's, so, so that 15 is definitely a very low estimate for the amount of people that went. Uh, and then again, based off of all of these documentaries that are flooding the internet about this area right now, yeah, bro, people are not happy. They're not happy. This is not like specifically a, like a color of the skin issue. It's purely based in um, these individuals are learning a brand new culture or attempting, or how about this? Not at all. They're not learning a brand new culture. They're there existing in their culture still, but within the United States of America, that generally doesn't function well. Uh, specifically, if you come from an area that a lot of the, these individuals are, are coming from, right? Just look up the guy barbecue from Haiti and you'll see, you'll understand instantly um, where these individuals are coming from. You'll see it and you'll be like, oh, yeah, we can't have our, our town looking like that under no circumstance, bro. So um, there needs to be some type of like maybe like a solid orientation or something saying like, listen, you are in, for the most part, the heartland of the United States of America. Right? Like this it doesn't get more American than that, right? Uh, without the influence of like big cities or su swaths of gigantic country. This is the heartland of America. 
right? Um, so you need to, you know, at least make it a solid attempt to kind of fit in or like learn the culture so you understand what people are actually complaining about. Because I'm sure the individuals there uh, currently that are Haitian migrants or Haitian refugees, right, uh, in this area uh, right now really don't truthfully understand why people are angry because they are living like they're still in Haiti, but they are in Springfield, Ohio. Okay. Uh, and generally that doesn't work. We're also referring to people who most likely have never traveled outside of their country uh, until they were basically placed in Springfield, Ohio. Okay. So keep that in mind also. There's a lot to actually dig into when it comes to this like topic overall. Um, for several years and maybe we're going to finally get it. The sad thing is, is it's more of my money being spent on a problem that we did not create. So, Diana, let's talk about that because you take great umbrage with some of the characterizations that people tried to make about, make about you and people in your town, saying that you're hateful people just because you're bringing attention to the issue. Uh, and, and some of those comments are being made by, by people that I've, that I've known for many years. And that's probably the, the hardest thing to deal with because this, this city has always been a close-knit community. We have pockets of neighborhoods and what's happening is a disruption of the smaller neighborhoods and it has never been um, a race issue. Uh, it's about color, it's, about, it's not about color, it's about culture. Um, your once close-knit community has now been uh, changed and there are people in your neighborhood that you don't know that don't speak your language that live a different lifestyle from you and um, it's going to cause some tension but it is a different culture that we're dealing with and I've tried and tried and tried to push culture. that issue but it's not helpful when our own city government um, has printed those very comments in mm -hmm. city documents. Who do you blame that for the this challenges is, that Springfield faces is race? I, I, I apologize, Diana, but who do you blame for this issue? Because we got a national election coming up, and there is one person that is control of the border, and that's the commander in chief, and he sets the policy for that through the Homeland Security Secretary. His vice president wants to be the next president. Who do you hold accountable for this surge of migrants that are now in your community? Well, based off the structuring of the sentence, right? Like how you structured that entire question, there could literally only be one answer. Well, it certainly is a it is a top down, and it's also a bottom up. Mm. So how how did how did Springfield well get the target put on its back for this many hey, Haitians? And don't forget, we also had a surge of uh, Hispanics from 2014 on. Um, how did that happen? And that's what a team and I have been investigating for the last year is the why. Um, why did this happen to us? Who was responsible? How did they get, how did that happen? And then follow the money. And it's very difficult with our limited resources to tease that out. But I, it is from the top down, but it's also from the bottom up. Yeah, it's such a valid point. Diana, I hope things get better. Uh, we'll continue reporting on this story. Thank you so much. Guys, Diana's a smart one. She didn't fall for that. Ooh, well played, Diana. Right? Well played, well played. Um, I do think that, you know, based off of listening to this uh, interview here, I think that uh, she's being honest. I mean, imagine like, you live in a small town. I live in a small town in the United States of America, very small, um, right? And um, I could not imagine an influx of, of like a brand new culture hitting my town in large numbers. 15, 35,000, the numbers keep changing, guys, right? But um, 35,000 people, let's say, hit my town. Oh, my God, I'm leaving. I'm going to be honest here. I'm just going to, like, I, I bought for a reason in the area, okay? Uh, for a very specific reason, zero crime, literally, okay? Um, high, the highest rated schools. Um, I wanted to make sure that every single thing in my town um, was basically things that had the ability to... I don't know, kind of like cradle my family and raise um, my kids, right? That's what I wanted. I did not raise, I didn't, I didn't specifically buy in an area, right, that was set up exclusively to bring in a brand new culture of individuals who are coming from literally a lawless country. I didn't want, I, I, would not, I wouldn't want that ever, right? That's not a thing. I would literally leave before property values plummet. I, I promise you, that's, that's, 
that's me, right? And I'm sure if individuals in Springfield, Ohio, um, saw it coming, they would have also done the same thing. They'd, they'd be running from the area before the property values uh, just completely plummet. Okay, the worst that the worst thing that could ever happen to your neighborhood or your your community. You buy something thinking you're going to be able to raise your family, and then you find out that it basically turns into I don't know, something different, bro. Okay, but all right, listen. Uh, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.